Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, I especially thank the participants for coming and uh, participating in this. Uh, it really is a, a wonderful moment for me to look back uh, before Lucy. And uh, I choose 1970, essentially for me, uh, as a beginning. That was the first time I participated in field work in Africa. Uh, when I went with Clark Howell to uh, the OMO. And I look at that time as especially significant in paleoanthropology because it led to what I did called in a previous book the golden decade of paleoanthropology, which was the 1970s. And you'll be happy to know that I'm not going back to Neanderthals, but will sort of restrict myself to the Pleistocene. So this is more or less what we had available in 1970. Uh, these were the various species, Heidelbergensis, Habilis, Erectus, Africanus, Robustus, Boisei, uh, and of course, Neanderthals. Um, which button advances this here? That doesn't do anything, nothing. All right, I'll do it, I'll do it on the computer. Uh, so, more or less, I showed this uh, talk at, at Mesa. Uh, this is more or less the hypothetical family tree we had at that time. Uh, we had a f very few species, uh, and of course that has changed uh, very dramatically as we will learn more about today. Uh, we didn't have any uh, ancestor for Africanus. Africanus played a very central role as you know, originally defined way back in 1925 by Raymond Dart. Uh, and that, of course, was essentially the vindication of Darwin and, and Huxley's prediction that Africa would be the crucible where humans were crafted. Um, there were relatively few sites being worked. Uh, one of the major sites uh, was the Lower Omo Basin which had been worked previously in 1930s, 1930s by the French. There was uh, what was then called Olduvai Gorge, which is now called Olduvai Gorge. And uh, things were gearing up uh, at Kubifora on the eastern side of uh, what was then Lake Rudolph, which today we call uh, Lake Turkana. And of course, fossils were coming out of uh, southern Africa in the Transvaal region but the point is, is that there were really relatively few sites where paleoanthropologists were working. And two of the uh, very, or three of the very important sites are Kubi Fora, Lower Omo Basin, and Oldupai, because that's where the multidisciplinary approach, which we use today, was pretty much hobbled together. Uh, the Circum Turkana Basin uh, has played a very major role in uh, the early stages of, of uh, paleoanthropology, pre-Lucy, uh, and I had the great joy of working in southern Ethiopia and meeting a number of people, Kay Berensmeyer, who is here today. Uh, and it was an area where Frank Brown, many other people, uh, were putting together a, a very significant, well-dated chronology uh, and correlating sites on the west side the east side and in the lower Omo Basin. And it's also where uh, they, we were refining uh, biostratigraphy, using index fossils to help us understand the antiquity of the deposits in which they were found that were dated obviously by uh, what at that time was uh, potassium argon dating. And it proved very useful in solving a number of problems uh, in 1972, this cranium was found uh, at, uh, on the east side. It was thought to be close to three million years old uh, on the basis of uh, argon dating. And uh, it was uh, very curious because it supported a long-held idea of the leaky family that there was early true man. And uh, that was debunked. Uh, ultimately with a combination of redating of the volcanic ash and also initially by Bas Basil Cook's uh, careful study and interpretation of biostratigraphy, particularly of pigs. So that has changed uh, quite dramatically. Okay. 
Uh, at that time, there were a number of people, uh, predominantly at the University of Michigan, uh, who felt that uh, there was a single species. Only a single species could be living at any one time. Since humans' uh, ecological niche was culture, the competitive exclusion principle that they talked about would uh, suggest that there could only be one kind of human living at that time. The work at uh, Kubifora with the discovery of uh, Australopithecus uh, or Paranthropus boisei and um, Homo in the same strata uh, was really dealt the death blow to the single species hypothesis. Uh, at that time, uh, in terms of out of Africa, uh, there was a predominant view that we could not have left Africa until we were firmly in control of uh, technology, particularly fire, uh, and that uh, the dates when I was in school at the University of Chicago for Java, uh, Homo erectus, were something like 400 to 500,000 years old, uh, but we know now that uh, our ancestors got out of Africa at least 1.8 million years ago, uh, and that the dates uh, at uh, Java have been revised to about 1.7 million years old. Um, one of the major developments uh, was under the direction of uh, Maurice Taieb, uh, who had been exploring the Afar uh, Triangle, and uh, during the course of his geological research, of course, he uncovered places that were very fossil rich. Uh, and in 1972, after a preliminary uh, search, uh, John Kalb, Eve Kopans, and myself, and uh, Maurice Taieb formed the International Afar Research Expedition. Uh, and uh, I show Raymond Bonfi because while she was not a signature, to that agreement, she played a very, very central role in bringing all of us together by uh, being a very uh, active and uh, positive uh, stimulus to Maurice to uh, open up this area to uh, other researchers. Uh, of course, we settled uh, on Hadar uh, in 1972. We didn't find any hominins at that point. Uh, but in, uh, and this is, I love this picture of, of Hadar, but uh, in 1973 uh, was the first hominid found in the Afar region, uh, which I found late one afternoon, uh, which is this uh, uh, knee joint that I've shown several times in the past few days. And uh, what was important about it was that it showed that our ancestors were walking upright at this point. Uh, we knew it was more than 3 million years old, but we didn't know how much older. It's probably about 3.4 million years. And we didn't know who it belonged to. So that's, that's quite interesting. We felt that it was, you know, thought or <laughs> that it might be Australopithecus, uh, but we didn't know what kind of Australopithecus. Uh, the other thing that uh, was uh, sort of pre-Lucy uh, was the fact that uh, our own genus was thought to have been traced back to maybe 1.8 million years, uh, predominantly on discoveries from uh, uh, East Lake Turkana and uh, as well as uh, Old Divai Gorge. And we now know, because of uh, Kay, Kay Reed's uh, work, uh, that uh, Homo uh, goes back to 2.8 million. Why are the two Ks sitting together? <laughs> uh, but at any rate. Uh, and, of course, uh, what was very interesting and persuasive was people like Louis Leakey said, if you don't have tools, you can't have hominins. So he was not interested in places like uh, Lytoli, for example. Uh, and uh, stone tools, which were generally called Olduin tools, uh, cut bones associated with stone tools, uh, were thought to be about 1.8 million. There were hints at Omo that it was much older, but. Uh, it wasn't as, uh, certainly wasn't as well defined as it is today. Uh, the, one of the predominant scenarios of how we became human was dominated by a conference that took place at the University of Chicago called Man the Hunter. And uh, today we are fortunately looking uh, more intensely and thinking about more 
uh, closely the role of uh, women in human origins. And that is a major shift from the very male-centric view in uh, the uh, pre-Lucy days. Um, ab uh, I should point out that uh, in terms of uh, applications, uh, what was absent uh, and uh, what we will hear much more about today are things uh, like uh, paleo DNA. We weren't really thinking much about uh, paleo DNA. We didn't think we would find very old DNA. That's, of course, stimulated a major revision in uh, Upper Paleo Middle and Upper Paleolithic, and in fact has defined one species solely on uh, DNA. Uh, pro proteonomics is uh, making a, a, a real strong uh, uh, insight into uh, proteins that are preserved where you don't have DNA. Uh, maybe we'll hear a little bit about that today. Trace element studies were uh, only, I mean, really in their infancy, uh, virtually non-existent pre-Lucy. And, um, okay. and today we're talking about different kinds of vegetation, C3, C4 vegetation, and uh, sy synchrotron scanning is revealing uh, important insights into maturation, age of death, and so on. None of those techniques were available to us then. So I'll just conclude with uh, the cover of uh, the current science magazine, uh, which is uh, an article that uh, Ann Gibbons, who was with us this morning, uh, wrote and is a very interesting prelude and adjunct to my presentation and to what is going to follow. So thank you very much.